Thank you, everyone. It is fantastic to be here. My name is Dave DeLong, and I am excited to talk to you today about the laws of magic. And in order to talk about magic, I want to introduce you to this man, and his name is Brandon Sanderson. If you have not heard of Brandon Sanderson, he is an author of fantasy and science fiction books. He's most well known for finishing the series called The Wheel of Time after the original author passed away. And he's also extremely well known for his own books. He has published many of his own books, um, over 47, such as Mistborn or The Stormlight Archive. And he has additionally announced plans for at least 40 more books. So he will be writing for a very long time. His books have won many awards, including uh, numerous times as a New York Times bestseller. He happens to live a couple of miles away from me, and he is one of my most favorite authors. In fact, Many of his books have even been translated into Japanese, and I really encourage you to go buy them. A few years ago, on his website, Brandon wrote about three laws of magic. These are rules that he follows when writing his books to help him create the magic systems in his books. And he follows these laws in order to keep things fun and interesting for his readers. But first, why are we talking about magic at a Swift conference? There is a quote by Arthur C. Clarke that says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. To our users, everything that we do is magic. Our phones are magic. An iPhone is made from sand, metal, and a few weird minerals. And if you mix them together in the right way, you get an iPhone. Magic. <laughs> and the code that we write can be magic. If you ever code something that feels like a hack, but it works, just remember that a CPU is literally a rock that we tricked into thinking by putting lightning inside of it. If we write frameworks, then we create magic for other developers. If we write apps, the apps that we make are magic for our users. And so by applying the laws of magic to frameworks and apps, we can create a magical experience for them. So the first Law of Magic. It says, an author's ability to solve conflict satisfactorily with magic is directly proportional to how well the reader understands said magic. This is a long and complicated sentence, but when you get down to it, it basically says, if you're going to use magic to solve a problem, your users have to understand how it works in order to be happy with the solution. So if we want our users to be satisfied or to be happy, they have to understand what is going on. So as app 
and library authors, we are responsible for making sure they understand what is happening. Part of that means that we anticipate the tasks they will want to perform, and we anticipate the questions they will ask. And we build into our frameworks and our apps ways to guide them towards the right answers. And we also make sure that when they make mistakes, we can be very forgiving. So how can we do this? First off, we have the type system in Swift. And we use that and the type safety of Swift to make sure that people using our frameworks are only using it in ways that they are supposed to. We follow conventions and use familiar design patterns so that there is less our users have to learn in order to understand the magic. Additionally, we can provide helpful diagnostics and error messages in our code. And we make sure that we write complete documentation and unit tests so that these can serve as more ways for our users to learn about our magic. If we're writing a library, we can anticipate how a user might want to use our code in a way that seems right to them, but is actually the wrong thing to do. We could do something like use fatal error to teach them that they're not supposed to do this, but they won't learn that until their app is running when it will suddenly crash. Instead, we can use an availability annotation to teach them while they are writing code to do something else. By marking this method or function as unavailable, the compiler will not let them proceed if they try to use this. We can teach them instead what they should be using and also explain why they should not be using it. In Xcode, it looks like this. Trying to use that method has become a compiler error. If we supply a replacement name in the annotation, Xcode will offer to make the change automatically with that fix button. And the message we wrote is included in the error message itself to teach them. Similarly, by providing full and complete documentation, users get a longer and more thorough discussion about why using a particular piece of code might not be the best choice to make. So that was the first law of magic. The second law of magic says limitations are greater than powers. Limitations are greater than powers because it is usually more interesting to know what you cannot do than what you can. 
If we look at all of the really fun and great stories in the worlds of fiction, all of the conflict that in these stories centers around the limitations of the characters. For example, Superman is not interesting because he can fly, or because he shoots lasers out of his eyes, or because he's very strong. Superman is interesting because of kryptonite. He is vulnerable, he is weak to kryptonite. That is his limitation. And all of the great Superman stories focus on that limitation. When we are faced with problems, limitations and constraints help us focus our creativity on coming up with a solution. And often, we end up being more creative because we have limitations. As we are writing apps, we are faced with many different kinds of limitations. We have limitations in time, team size, personal capabilities, what features we have to write, and so on. We make choices based on these limitations. And often, the code that we write reflects the limitations more than it reflects our capabilities. So as we write, we are asking ourselves what limitations we will impose. What patterns will we follow? What consequences do we accept by following these patterns? What features will we leave out because of our limitations? And often, when we find ourselves stuck on a problem, we can kickstart our creativity by giving ourselves artificial limitations. Adding limitations often reveals alternatives that we would have never considered otherwise. The third law of magic says, expand what you already have before you add something new. We get excited about things when we realize there is more to discover. That is why conferences like this exist. And part of that excitement comes when you find something that you think no one else has ever found before, but it still fits perfectly within the larger picture. As human beings, we love discovering that something that looks simple is in fact deeply complex and nuanced. There is a kind of beauty and delight that comes from discovering that something simple is also deeply profound. One of the characters in Brandon Sanderson's books sums this up by saying, there is always another secret. When we build our apps and frameworks, remember that providing a deep experience with lots of opportunity for discovery typically provides a far more profound and enjoyable experience for our users.
a deep experience is not one that comes easily. It's something that grows and evolves over time by careful refactoring and evolution of our code. And so as we think about adding depth to our code, consider questions like these. What scenarios have we not considered yet? And how can we account for them? Are there system features that we are not supporting yet that we could? Adding depth to what we already have is a sure way to delight our users. So these are the three laws of magic. That our ability to solve problems with magic depends on how well our users understand that magic. That what we cannot do is often more important than what we can do. And third, that if we add depth and hidden things to discover, we will create an experience to delight our users. Now, like all good arrays, this actually starts at zero. And so if you follow these three laws, you will accidentally discover the zeroth law of magic, which is to make it awesome. Thank you very much.